Okay, here's what we're gonna do now. We're actually gonna finally, after all this stuff, we're actually gonna use Gauss's law to find field due to point charge at a distance r. And you may say, uh, why would I ever want to do that? I already know that. It's kq over r squared. You'd be right. There's, it's pointless to do this, except showing that Gauss's law works in a super simple example to show that Gauss's law works. So here's what we do. We start with a, a charge q. Let's use a positive charge right here. Point charge q plus q right there. There's our point charge. So the first question is, what shape of a Gaussian surface would we need so that we, uh, we can make either one or more or all of these true? And so we want to figure out the field at a distance r away from this thing. Um, what shape of a Gaussian surface do you suppose we're going to use? Hint, we need the field to be the same everywhere on this surface. It's going to be a sphere. Again, your choices are basically going to be a sphere, a cylinder, or a uh, box, so that's uh, really there's not too many choices. In this case, it's going to be a sphere. So I'm going to create a Gaussian surface, a spherical Gaussian surface that this charge is centered within. There is my Gaussian surface, and I'm going to make this a of radius r, some arbitrary r. I don't know what it is. It's just r. So here is Gauss's law. The integral of e dot dA over the whole closed surface is equal to q in over epsilon naught. And epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space and see a prior video to find out what epsilon naught and its value. So, well, let's just kind of sketch the field here. That's going to help us. I'm going to sketch this field in red. Field looks like this. And you can argue that over this sphere, the field strength is the same everywhere because no matter where you stand on this Gaussian surface, no matter where you stand on it, this situation looks the same. So I can argue that, well, first of all, our dA vector, let's figure out what that looks like. dA vector is just a little teeny, here's our dA, our dA vector, which way does the dA vector point? It's away from the center. Points or radial would be a better word, I think. It's radially outward. This is our dA vector right there. Here's our, in red, is our E vectors. Or these are E field lines, but they you could put an E vector at any one of these points. So what is for every single point on here, no matter where it is, everywhere on here, here's our dA vector right there. There's the dA vector. I can't draw a straight line, but there's dA vector right there. Here's the dA vector right there. Here's the dA vector right there. For every single one of these, what's the angle between the E field and the dA vector? Theta is always zero here. So E dot dA, I can replace that with just E dA. And that's important because we, just, we don't want that cosine in there. It's just going to be E dA, like that. And here's the thing, what can you argue about the field strength at every single point on this? It's going to be the same everywhere, and you argue by symmetry, well, no matter where I stand, it looks the same. So by symmetry, uh, by symmetry, uh, and you may have to argue that on an AP exam, by symmetry, E is magnitude, and that's how we indicate the magnitude of a vector. It is the same everywhere on the Gaussian surface. Good news, if it's really a constant, what can you do in terms of the integral here? You take it out, and you always want to take it out. If you're doing Gauss's law right, this E will always come out. So you could just say that the integral of this situation, you could just say because of this, the integral of E dotted on dA equal to integral of E dA is just going to be the E magnitude times the integral of dA. This is the beauty of this situation. That'll equal Q in over epsilon naught. E is just is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the E field on that Gaussian surface. We're trying to find that E. This is the beauty of it. The integral of dA is what? 
what is the integral of that closed sphere of radius r of dA? It is the area of a sphere, which is what? 4 pi r squared. So I'm just going to rewrite this thing right here. I'm going to rewrite this whole mess right there as just e times 4 pi r squared. And that's q in over epsilon naught. So to, I want you to, all you got to do right now is solve for E. Just solve for E. That's all we're ever going to do is we're solving for E. And that is super easy. And we do this because it is easier than Coulomb's law. Uh, this is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times uh, Q. Uh, it's our, uh, the specific Q we have in there is our plus Q over R squared. Uh, what is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, very commonly uh, notated as? That's our K. So notice we, just, we didn't prove anything fancy. We just proved that the electric field at a distance R at uh, R is equal to KQ over R squared. Nothing new. So probably not the best use of Gauss's law. It works. Now let's actually use Gauss's law for something really interesting. And this is where Gauss's law really kicks in with all the power that Gauss's law has to offer.